Tonight we take a look at the Sodexo sweepstakes. And the newly crowned Miss Troy. Stay tuned, Troy Trojan Vision News starts now. From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network. At Troy, Alabama's international university. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for October 26, 2015. I'm Deborah Bogart. And I'm Jordan Elston. Thank you for joining us this evening. Students in Trojan Dining got a lunchtime interruption this afternoon to see one of their own be awarded in a national Sodexo sweepstakes. Sarah Singletary was at the award presentation. What started out as a student waiting in line for her food has now resulted in her winning the grand prize in a nationwide Sodexo sweepstakes. Junior English major Charlie Craig was presented with a MacBook Pro Monday morning in Trojan Dining. Craig shares with us just how excited she is to have won. I still can't even believe the odds that I won this because like it is a one in a million chance and I, I do a lot of things that require a better computer like writing and I make YouTube videos so having a better computer to finally make better content on is really helpful and I can't believe that I won. just can't believe it. The fall al fresco sweepstakes was a nationwide promotion by Sodexo. Over a thousand locations with about a thousand entries each literally made Craig's win one in a million. Fall al fresco just seemed to be something that I believe it came out of our student board of directors uh, group and they decided that that would be one of the best promotions to run right out of the gate. So I think out, out of, and I could be wrong, I think it was about a thousand or eleven hundred colleges and universities across North America ran this promotion. And if you have an average of about a thousand students per location do this, you can do the math. This was a one in a million shot. Sodexo hosts two nationwide sweepstakes per semester. And by participating in these events, Trojan Dining hopes to show its students that there is more to the on-campus dining hall than three meals a day. Grand prize meaning to, to us is actually, you know, the taking the name of the Troy University to the global. We also that, you know, the letting our students know that you know that you can engage with a lot of different events. We are here actually provide a different service. We're not all about the food service. That we also try to entertain, engage with our students with a different event. Trojan Dining in Sodexo will host another promotional event this semester and two more in the spring. Sarah Singletary, Troy, Trojan Vision News. For more on Sodexo promotions and sweepstakes, visit SodexoUSA.com. This past weekend, some of our own Troy University students got to dress up in their most glamorous gowns, all in hopes of taking home a crown and the chance to represent Troy University for a year. And what beautiful young ladies we have competing this afternoon for the title of Miss Troy University 2016. On Saturday, October 24th, 10 Troy University students vied for the title of Miss Troy. The ladies competed in a number of portions, including swimsuit, talent, interview, on-stage question and evening gown. After all the scores were tabulated, Leah Livingston, a junior communications major from Tallahassee, Florida, took home the crown. And the prep work is crazy intense, but it's just been a blast getting to know these girls, um, getting to make new friendships and relationships, and just getting to have fun and feel beautiful and look beautiful at the same time. Part of the requirement as Miss Troy is to establish a platform that she will advocate during her reign. Livingston says she plans to use her time as Miss Troy University to positively impact younger girls in the community. My platform is Girls Inc, inspiring girls to be strong, smart, and bold, and it automatically just helps girls in, um, it's like an after school care setting in the sense that they have somewhere to be, somewhere to grow, somewhere to go to, and a home away from home, and maybe even a mom away from home, just inspiring these girls to be the best that they can be. With the conclusion of Saturday's pageant, Livingston said this is when the real work begins as she prepares to compete against the other school representatives in Miss Alabama. I'm looking forward to the events and getting to compete in Miss Alabama this year. I'm excited, I'm nervous, I don't exactly know what goes into that, but I'm excited that I have two amazing directors by my side to help me, Miss Sarah Jo Burks and Mr. Rob Drinkard. Also receiving honors were first runner-up Carly Spencer, second runner-up Lacey Marcus, Third runner-up and Miss Congeniality was Kaylee Sanders. Fourth runner-up, Angeline Kendall, with Jalen Morrison receiving the People's Choice Award. The 2016 Miss Alabama pageant will take place June 8th through the 11th. 
When you think of art, the normal styles that usually come to mind are sketches, paintings, or sculptures. But on Saturday, the Johnson Center for the Arts had something else in mind. Ryan Renfro gives us not just a look at a different version of art, but even a sound. That was the sound of an art that is usually found outside city limits. But by the abilities and efforts of Pike County students and members of the Johnson Center for the Arts, this unique form of art has found its way out of the wilderness and into the streets of Troy. What we decided to do was take our students back to the beginning of art and let them draw and express themselves through nature. And uh, we have a wonderful display of student art and taxidermy at the Johnson Center. And you said, well, why are we doing something with hunting? Well, the oldest art, art really began with the hunt man representing the hunt. Students and families in attendance got to experience the art of the wild firsthand from a man who says that he is the richest man in the world, not by dollars, but by experiences. What I am is I'm a game call manufacturer and that is an art in itself and being able to create the different products that uh, will reproduce the sounds of the American wild turkey. I look at it from the standpoint that it, that it is very much of an art for that um, man or woman that can sit there and God's greatest creation, you know, are outdoors and use and utilize, you know, these products that not only I but other companies make to be able to har call that bird in and harvest that bird. The Johnson Center's infectious wildlife fever is not only just an art display, but members and volunteers hope to raise money for a group of local archery students who are shooting for more than just a target. We came today uh, for the exposure of our program and we do have a regional competition in Ozark scheduled in March. If we qualify there, we are eligible to go to the state tournament in Montgomery, Alabama, near Crampton Bow at that sports facility. Uh, that will be the 7th of, of April. And if we're lucky enough, we'll qualify for the national championships, which are held each year in Louisville, Kentucky. This is my first time like shooting for real, so it's like shooting and having a good time. This is my first time mainly doing this. I would to try our best and everything like that. Be focused, don't worry about anything. Just be your mind on the target and do your best. We went to Kentucky last year, like you said, and it was one of the best experiences that I've had, seeing everyone shoot and the thousands of people that were there. <laughs> Ryan Renfro, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The Johnson Center will be hosting a student art exhibit until November 14th. And now taking a look at news from around the state, authorities say a five-year-old student was struck and killed by a school bus this morning after he dropped his books and stopped to try and pick them up on a county road about 15 miles south of Tuskegee-Macon County Coroner Hal Bentley tells Alabama.com that the school bus driver did not notice that the boy was trying to pick up his books. An Alabama police officer faces his second trial on federal charges of abusing the rights of an Indian man who is slammed down during an encounter with police. Court records show that Eric Parker goes on trial today in Huntsville. A judge declared a mistrial in Parker's first trial in September. Joey Logano completed a sweep of the second round of NASCAR's playoffs by winning in a controversial finish yesterday at Talladega Super Speedway. Reigning Sprint Cup champion Kevin Harvick sputtered on the restart to trigger a multi-car accident. Logano did pass under the green flag though and NASCAR quickly threw the caution. Still to come on Troy Trojan Vision News, it was success out west for the Trojan football team over the weekend. Ryan Rimpro gives us a look at the game coming up in sports. And an earthquake in Afghanistan claims the lives of over a hundred people. More details after the break. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. <coughs> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. Okay, but remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. 
Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. It was one big play after another on Saturday for the Trojan football team, whose offense put up a total of 45 points in the first half and averaged over seven yards per play against New Mexico State. And if you ask head coach Neil Brown about his team's performance, he'll say that Saturday's 52-7 Trojan triumph was a good team win and that one Trojan's poised performance in the pocket had a lot to do with that. Uh, offensively, by far the best game we've played this year. Uh, hopefully those, those performances start becoming the norm. Uh, our Offensive Player of the Week was Brandon Silvers. It was good to get him back. Uh, we're a different team offensively, offensively when he plays. Um, it had been since the second series of the Mississippi State game since he would played, and, and he did a nice job. Came out, threw the ball with a lot of confidence, uh, got the ball out of his hand quick, uh, made, was decisive. That was probably the best thing that, that I saw out of him is he was decisive. Silver's decisiveness led him to complete 23 of his 37 passes for 288 yards and wait for it, five touchdowns. Now, when asked what it felt like to get back on the field, Silver says that his absence due to injury was simply fuel to the fire of his dedication to return. It was great. You know, I hadn't played in about, you know, really two weeks. And uh, it was great. It was a great back to get, uh, get back to practice. You know, it was hard to watch for the whole week, just watching practice and watching the Idaho game. And uh, it was just great to get back uh, Monday night of last week, and uh, it was great. Coach Brown says the big telling point of Saturday's game was zero turnovers on offense. But on the flip side of the ball, he highlights his team's performance on defense and why the past two outings have been important to the progress of the program. But the good thing is, and this I think this is a testament of how far we've come, talking about how we haven't played as well. We only gave up seven points this week and only gave up 16 the week before. So I think a lot of that shows of, of how much improvement we've made. With Saturday's win, the Trojans now stand at a 2-5 and five record on the season and will head to North Carolina this week to take on Appalachian State on Saturday at 2.30 p.m. The Troy men's golf team is in second place after an impressive opening round on Sunday in the Intercollegiate of the Grove. Junior Clayton Vinoy led the way for the Trojans shooting a 1 under 71 and tying for fourth place, while redshirt junior Cam Norman currently stands in eighth place. As a team, the Trojans fired a tournament-high 17 birdies to open up the first round and teed off in the second round earlier today at approximately 10.03, and they are paired with Lipscomb and Kentucky. Now, the Trojan soccer team was back in action as the winningest class of seniors in program history took the pitch on Sunday for the final home match and regular season game of the year. The Trojans showed off their endurance as the game went to two overtimes and ended in a 0-0 draw. Head coach Jason Hamilton shares his thoughts on the game, and as the conference tournament draws near, the importance of taking advantage of every opportunity. This year, I've mentioned a few times, we've used the word opportunistic more than ever before, and uh, we have 19 shots. You have, you have to be a little bit more opportunistic around the goal, especially with, uh, you know, give a lot of credit to um, Little Rock's goalkeeper. Uh, she's been phenomenal for them all year, kept them in some big games against some non-conference opponents, and there's a reason why they're, you know, have made such a big jump, and, and she's a part of it. So, uh, you know, we just have to be a little bit more opportunistic in those chances, and uh, especially when there's a team that's defending that much and so many bodies back there. With the draw bringing an end to the regular season, Hamilton says that this year's senior class is one to remember and that the desire to win is stronger now more than ever. They're a phenomenal class. Um, you know, they've, it hasn't been easy for them. Uh, we, we, we play a lot different. We've played some of them in different positions. We're asking a lot of responsibilities that they didn't have, uh, you know, when they were, before I got here and, and before they, they came to college. So uh, they've really, really done a good job kind of adjusting to those roles that we've asked of them. After how last year went, they saw that their senior year was a good opportunity for them to, to be very successful like we have been so far. And, you know, they're hungry and they still want to come out and win a conference championship for us. That conference tournament is just over a week away. And with a handful of youngsters on the team, one season Senior shares how she plans to lead. I think just going into it, just getting them like recomposed and realizing even though we just tied like now is when it starts, we got second place, so now it's time to like this week we have 10 days off, so this is time to get better even than this like the rest of the season. The Trojans finished with a 13-4-1 record and clinched a second place finish in conference play with the conference tournament beginning on November 4th. 
Now let's head out to New Orleans where the Troy men's and women's tennis teams had successful performances on Saturday in the Big Easy Tennis Classic. On the men's side, sophomore Callum McKinley won the singles flight six title, but it was his own teammates who stood in the way. McKinley took down Trojans Jeremy Broad, Andre Baldo, and Sam Bird to take home the number one spot. For the women, three of the four Trojans made it all the way to the semifinals of the singles competition, and Sonny Oda and Nancy Karaki advanced to the semifinals in the doubles competition.